treatment and after which you'll be taking fresh MGF. Thank you. The first statement reads as follows. Finally, the government has awakened from its deep slumber in the midst of a crime situation that has reached uncontrollable proportions. We have a serious problem on our hands, lamented President Granger. It is to be recalled that in August 2013, the then opposition APNU issued a press release in relation to the crime situation stating that, quote, not enough is being done to comprehensively fight the scourge plaguing Guyana, end of quote. The statement went on to add, quote, all citizens need to feel a sense of safety and security, something that is sadly lacking in Guyana, end of quote. The statement for the call, quote, on all Guyanese and parties to act now to secure a reversal of the trend of armed robberies and violence against persons, end of quote. The statement concluded by calling on the then PVPC government to, quote, give the security sector the leadership it needs to ensure that all Guyanese can be safe and secure and can attain the good life to which they are all entitled, end of quote. That was in August 2013. This exact narrative an exhortation can be situated in today's context. This time, however, with the APNU in government and to whom the statement is attributed. It is indeed mind-boggling to recall that while the APNU was in the opposition, it knew exactly what had to be done to address the crime situation in our country. But now that it is in the government, it is at its wit's end, not knowing what to do to quell the surge in crime. The Granger administration is clearly overwhelmed by the crime situation, which has spiraled out of control, forcing them to admit by their very actions that they have failed the people on this front. The continuous bombardment of speeches, lectures, pontifications, and lamentations by the government spokespersons will not solve the problem. And the much publicized declaration that government has, quote, credible information related to potential domestic security threat is not something new. When in June 2012, the then Ministry of Home Affairs justified that senior officers of the Guyana Police Force will not be granted their full annual vacation leave in view of what was described as, quote, a potentially delegate period of national security the PNC propagandists scoffed at the announcement and declared that the comment was made to, quote, conjure up fear and anxiety in the nation and to initiate a certain kind of reaction from the opposition and the wider society, end of quote. In respect of the APNU AFC recent declaration that they have credible information related to a potential domestic security threat, many have asked what constitutes such a threat. The PNC propagandists claimed at that time that the representatives of the people must know of this potential security threat that looms over their lives and that of the people they represent. Further, these propagandists had stated, quote, should the government fail to provide this information, they should be cited 
for making statements to cause unnecessary fear and panic in the nation, a fear capable of putting the life of every citizen in incalculable risk, end of quote. This approach, while said in the past, seems quite applicable in the current situation. Messrs. Granger and Ramjatan's attempt to lay the growing fears and anxieties of Guyanese over their safety and security will not succeed by telling them that they have, quote, nothing to worry about, nor to be alarmed, and to be patient. Nor will Guyanese be assured that they will not be robbed in their homes, place of work, or on the streets by, quote, putting troops in targeted areas to lay their fears and to, arrest, and to help arrest the crime situation, end of quote. All of this will fall on deaf ears unless the people begin to see tangible and sustainable results from efforts by law enforcement to bring the crime situation under control. Government must make greater efforts to include Guyanese at every level to enforce law and order. At our last press conference, the PVP had pointed out that crime prevention must, give, must be given the same emphasis with crime solving. In fact, it is crime prevention that the people are demanding with every passing day. The good life with the APNU AFC claims that Guyanese are entitled to will not be realized with the constant loss of life, limb, and property. Thank you. The next, the next statement reads as follows. The People's Progressive Party has been reliably informed that the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission, Dr. Steve Sersbali, had decided to demit office with effect from November the 30th, 2016. Further, the party had been reliably informed that the chairman of the commission has proceeded on 90 days annual vacation leave due to him with effect from September the 1st, 2016 at the end of which he will vacate office. Dr. Serge Bali has so informed the commission at a recent statutory meeting of that body. Dr. Serge Bali is currently on leave. The party understands that Dr. Serge Bali has already <coughs> informed President Granger and the leader of the opposition of his decision to demit office at the end of November 2016. The PVP is concerned that since proceeding on leave, meetings of GCOM have not been held to deal with substantive issues save for one meeting to address administrative matters relating to the currently ongoing continuous registration. Letters have been written by members of GCOM to Dr. Serge Bali requesting the convening of GCOM meetings to discuss matters of strategic importance to the work of the Commission. Approaches will be made at the appropriate constitutional level to discuss the terms of engagement which will have to be embarked upon in order to appoint a new chairman of GCOM in accordance with the letter and spirit of Article 161 of the Constitution of Guyana. Another statement reads as follows. The People's Progressive Party notes with deep concern certain recent developments in the judiciary which are affecting the administration of justice, 
to the detriment of our citizens. We are aware that dire shortages of judges in the, we are aware that there are dire shortages of judges in the judicial system. We are also aware that the Judicial Service Commission has made recommendations to the President for the appointment of several judges to the High Court and to the Court of Appeal several months ago. But to date, no such appointments have been made. A reasonable inference one can draw is that the nominees of the JSC, that is, the Judicial Service Commission, do not meet the approval of the executive. This is quite unfortunate because the approval of the executive of the nominees of the JSC is not a constitutional requirement. The retirement of Justice Chief Justice Ian Chang, SC, created quite a void in the judicial system. He was replaced by the Honorable Justice of Appeal, Mistress Yannick Comic Edwards, thereby leaving the Court of Appeal, a three members court, with only two judges. Every time the Court of Appeal sits, a judge from the High Court is required to leave all of his or her cases in the High Court and go over to the Court of Appeal, the consequences of which are chaotic in the High Court. We must point out that under President Ramatar's administration, the complement of judges of the High Court were increased from 12 to 20, specifically to avoid these problems. We also feel compelled to point out that the work of the crucial constitutional and administrative law court is severely affected by this situation. This is a specialized court which, has a, which was established to exclusively hear and determine with dispatch allegations of the citizens of constitutional violations and abuse of power by the executive branch and by public officers. In the circumstances, we call upon President Granger to swiftly act upon the recommendations of the Judicial Service Commission as he is obliged to do under the Constitution of Guyana. The last statement reads as follows. Statement by Clement Ruhi. I consider it unnecessary and inappropriate at this point in time to respond to the Kaicho News anti-police baiting story headline, quote, Rohi accused of hampering robbery probe at his house. Allegedly demands back DVR before cops can review the footage, end of quote. The professional CID ranks and higher civilian authorities know otherwise. I have discerned the mischief in the story, interestingly carried only by the Kaicho News. The Kaicho News story is consistent with its attempt to create the false impression that the robbery was staged by the victim and to foment schisms between the victim and the investigating ranks of the Guyana Police Force on this particular matter. The Kaicho News is reminded that the claim of a staged occurrence was made against its proprietor in respect of the grenade that was thrown at his SUV. The Kaicho News needs to be reminded that people in glass houses should not throw stones. Thank you. Very hard on the Question, who does it?
any questions? Question? Uh, so, uh, would you be able at this point to then say uh, who uh, would be the nominees for the, um, the opposition side for the steering committee? The nominee for what? The steering committee the nominee. No, I'm not in a position to say that at this stage. Any other question? If not, um, I would like to read this statement here. <coughs> the People's Progressive, sorry. The People's Progressive Party 31st Congress will be held at the Cotton Field Secondary School in Etiquette from December the 17th to 19th, 2016. Ongoing preparations have intensified as the party ramps up its activities for one of our most important events, which will bring together delegates and observers drawn from all 10 administrative regions of Guyana. A number of overseas groups are expected to grace this Congress. Under the theme, Strengthening the Party, Defend Democracy, Onward to Victory, the Congress will provide for a comprehensive overview of the party's performance since the last Congress and outline a strategic direction in keeping with the party's program and Guyana's present social, political, and economic situation. The delegates and observer will examine the APNU AFC, APNU government's stewardship so far, initiate discussions, and make the recommendation to the party in the way forward. Emphasis will be placed on strengthening party structure and unity as the PBP seeks to provide some consistent, steady, and reliable leadership and to continue to work towards improving the quality of life of all Guyanese. The Central Congress Committee is chaired by PBP's Executive Secretary Zulfikar Mustafa. This body is meeting weekly as the momentum intensifies and reports regularly to the Executive Committee of the party. At the level of the party, groups across the country are in the process of preparing motions and resolutions, initiating fundraising activities, identifying delegates, observers, and nominees to contest the election to the Central Committee of the party. All logistical arrangements are well and stream. At the local, com at the local level, our comrades are well advanced in their preparation, and the mood of the people in Essequibo is very high as they prepare to host the PPP for 31st Congress. The highlight of our Congress will be the Central Committee's report to be presented by the party's General Secretary, Clement Ruhi, and an address by the opposition leader and election to the Central Committee of the PPP. Thank you. Any question on this statement? If not, ladies and gentlemen, thank you.